Us, good morning. Me back again, Analog Attack, and I'm here with Dave Witty. Cheers, Dave. Cheers, Mike. What are you drinking, my friend? Looks a lot better than the beer I've got. Ah, uh, this is a uh, still knocked brew beer, uh, Belgian Golden Strong Elm from Dodola Brewers. Uh, I think the first and the oldest microbrewery in Richmond, 1980, uh, in uh, Belgium, 1980. Wow. Great beer. 12%. It's packs a punch. Amazing. And how, how did you find out about that beer, Dave? Uh, actually, Bill from uh, Exit 13, and who, who was the con over of Relapse Records at the time, was a giant Belgian beer nerd, and he, he got me into it, turned me on to it. I told him that I didn't like beer, and he's like, oh, you should try this. That's amazing. I used to write. I used to write to him quite a bit, actually, back in the old days. Like I didn't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. still in touch with Bill. Really? When yeah, we he, still talk beer. When did he stop doing relapse? When? Do you remember? I I don't remember. Yeah. I mean, I think he's always he was involved for, for uh, the whole time, but silent. Okay. Yeah. So, what have you been drinking lately, and what what are some of your favorites? Uh, Belgium's my first love. Oh, really? You know, yeah, I always drink a lot of Belgian beer. Oh. Uh, and lagers, stouts are, are probably my favorite, though, my favorite style. I was going to ask you if you if you managed to get to taste. I did. did you get one? Yeah, Bar sent you one? yeah Barney, Barney brought me a bottle. I was really happy about that. Yeah, what, what, what's your like, what's your professional opinion about Because my friend Randy in Tokyo, he, Tokyo, he brewed this beer. Yeah, it's good. It's very well made. Yeah, I uh, I myself prefer the the stronger imperial stouts. Right. But that that was a nice beer. And did he did he give you this one? This is this is the newest one, right? No, I haven't seen him, so I, I okay, haven't. Okay. Yeah. Him. I'll tell him. I'll to, have to bug him for it. Yeah, this is a bit <laughs> stronger, I think. Yeah, this is the smashing imperialism, imperial stout. So. This yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so I was getting back to Barney. We were talking last night, and he was telling me about this band you've got called Under Attack, which I didn't actually know about, but it sounds exciting. Yeah, it's cool. It's a lot of fun. Been doing it for like about a year and a half or something like that. Uh, actually, Bobby Final Conflict put our demo out on cassette. Did he? Oh, my. Yeah, and then uh, and Jensen from Iron Lung put a seven inch out for us. And. Uh, Pretty soon, well, uh, it's been a long time coming, but pretty soon uh, we'll have a split out with C and Red, who who got back together to do a record. Yeah, that uh, was, Mark. That was yeah, really Mark. The, mm. Yeah, Mark, the guitar player in, in the band, is really good friends with them. Mark used to be in Limp Wrist and okay. Devoid of Faith years ago. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I know Yoss from C and Red. He's an old friend. Yeah, he's good. Mark and him are good buddies. Cool. Yeah. When's when's that coming out? Dave, do you know? Well, it was supposed to come out a while ago, and then you know the world got turned upside down, yeah. and then I guess uh, the Netherlands and Holland are like in a weird lockdown now, so it's going to be prolonged even further. Right. And who's so? Who's, uh, who's, hopefully, who's, the sooner who's, the better. Who's putting that out? Uh, those guys are. You also put it out. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And I've got another <laughs> Tony and a couple of other guys. Greg Daly said to me they knew i was going to talk to you today so they said to me <laughs> <laughs> no i have no, no idea what this means so i'm sorry if i've been pranked or anything here but they said please the ask banana boat? <laughs> banana, banana boat yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the greatest <laughs> that was seriously one of the greatest moments of my life really? with those two guys yeah, yeah we, we've done we've we've done a lot of stuff together but that's a highlight of of, of a lifetime for sure it was some of the 70 tons of metal uh cruise ship yeah. And it was this banana boat out, you know, in Jamaica. I think it was Jamaica. Yeah. And man, or Bahamas, one of the two. And man, it was. <laughs> I haven't laughed that hard in so long. It was. It was fantastic. Yeah, I, I thought they might be pranking me a little bit, so I thought I'll, I'll be. I'll tread carefully with this question, but obviously, yeah. No, it was great. <laughs> and one of my other favorite memories mm. of that is is we uh, Thomas Thomas was with us at the gates this year we're like come oh, yeah. on man come do it with us and you know he's like ah you know I, I don't think i'm gonna go and then and then uh when we finished we're walking back walking back onto the beach 
And he says to me, he's like, you know, as soon as you guys pulled away, I regretted my decision. I should have went. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm trying to imagine this banana boat. So it was on, on the ship, on the deck of the ship? or just No, up, it was actually... Up, 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 um, mm. Yeah, uh, you're, you're offload the boat for like 24 right. hours or something like that. And then uh, you go hang out on the beach. People go to town. You do whatever you want. You got, you know, a good amount of time to do whatever. So we chose to hang out on the beach, drink beers and hang out. And they had the banana boat, the guy that pulls it around, this big, long, yellow tube that people get on. He drives you around. Man, I haven't laughed that hard, like I said. <laughs> My stomach is hurting. And I was like trying for dear life to hold on because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> What's that thing like, that cruise thing? I've been a bit intrigued by that for a while now. Non-stop. Yeah. Who yeah, played when always, you, who played when you were on there? Who, Say, Mike? Who played when you were on, the, on there? Who played that year? Uh, we did two of them. We did okay. that one. Mm. And then uh, th that was, I think the first one was Barge from Hell. And then we did 70 mm. Tons of Metal. Right. And it, there, was, there was a lot of bands on them. You know, I... Uh, I'm going to be a jerk and not remember. <laughs> but it seems like such a wide range of bands. Like Motorhead played that one too, right? At some point. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. They had to. Yeah. And then they went on to have their own, I think. Oh. Their Motorhead crews right, or something yeah. like that. Right, yeah. Motorboat, I think. It was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Dave, I was kind of like, not stalking, that's the wrong word, but I was looking at your Instagram earlier and... Uh, you picked I, there's some pictures of some really some records there so i i thought should we have a quick talk about <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just no. got it yeah man i i like all of no means no's discography but for me this one is the definite like standout i was so blown away because uh a friend of mine moved to town and i don't know like late late middle school and yeah. then we became friends like early in high school i remember sitting in his room him playing me that because i was like a metalhead it was my steady diet for a while yeah and him and his brother opened up my world with all these bands and that was one of them and i was blown away yeah and i've been like ever since i got back into records a few years back i uh, i go that's the thing i always there's two records i look for mm. well three all right. i look for that yeah and I've been looking and looking forever. And then my buddy, Justin Foley, mm. the austerity program, made a post that he was selling some records. Yeah. And I was like, hey, are you selling that? And he's like, no, I'm not. And then it just showed up at my house. <laughs> yeah. So that's the one, the one I had back in the day. And then when I, moved, when I moved to Japan, I sold all my records. But I found it again a few years ago in Japan. So. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Nice. What an amazing I, record. Yeah. How do you describe it? I mean, did, I mean it's just... There's nothing that sounds like that band or that record out there. It's no. incredible. It's, it's fun. Uh, it's missing a couple. The CD has a couple bonus tracks. That aren't really? on the vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was waiting to hear them and I'm like, oh man, it's not on here. Uh, yeah. Did you ever see them live back in the day? Yeah. I was yeah. just going to bring that up. Because mm. uh, when Municipal Ways tour went Lamb of God years ago, I think it was 2009, something mm. like that. Uh, we played Winnipeg. And this guy, Drew Johnson, that I know, had come to the show. And uh, it was a hectic night. And I ran into him at the lobby. And he was like, hey, it was great. I got to go, man. I'm going to go see uh, this band, No Means No, playing down the street at the small bar. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so well, Tony and I went over there and saw him. And they were killer. Yeah. I forget the name of the drummer. But I remember just watching him a lot. Even though I'm not a drummer myself, I remember being a bit transfixed by that guy. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. I don't remember his name offhand. It's the Wright, I, it's the a, Wright brothers, right? Yeah. John Wright or Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I should be I should have de a demerit system. I should have <laughs> points off for not knowing that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't check. So that was one of that was a great record. I saw that. Another one was, I don't have it. I'd look for it, but it was the Pretenders first album. You posted uh, that. Yeah, my Aunt yeah. Mary got me that. Yeah, I love that album as well. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. She got me that and then the Men at Work cassettes. <laughs> Those are my first two cassettes. Yeah. My Aunt Mary got me into music, more or less. Yeah. And then I was, this is actually the one I was kind of most excited that you posted because I'm a, I'm a big fan as well. Oh, man. What a great record. <laughs> you like it? Me too. Yeah. It's I do. Of, and the recording's it, fantastic. It is. It's kind of more bluesy. It's not heavy, 
you know? Yeah. It, yeah. And then when I put it on my record player, I was immediately blown away on how much better it sounds yeah. compared to all the streaming stuff. Oh, yeah. I, this, I think this, for me, this was the record that I kind of needed this year. It's a real sort of joyous record. Makes yeah, good... they're my favorite. So it, I, I was anticipating it for quite a while, and I was, I was not let down. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, like, because a lot of people always say the drumming is really simple and everything in ACDC, but how difficult is it to play like that? Extremely. Not right. many people can do it. Yeah. He's a machine. Yeah. Yeah, that story uh, where, Mutt, you know, Mutt Lange, he, he did yeah. the Back in Black album. Yes. And he also did all the, the uh, really uh, successful Def Leppard records at the yeah. time. And he wanted to use a machine. And Angus was like, no, we already have one. His name's Phil. And then they used Phil on the record. I mean, how difficult is it to be that? I, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not a drummer, but, and it, it does sound simple, but yeah, it, it just a machine as you say it's it's perfect he plays for yeah. the song he doesn't overplay yeah. yeah and all the symbols like are in kind of weird spots for me anyway oh yeah yeah amazing i'm glad you like that record because i think it's I do. Kind of a return to form you could say it's almost like got that power age style production it's kind of more bluesy and yeah and I, you can hear it's him playing drums yeah yeah and the hi-hats yeah <laughs> <laughs> fantastic that record really made me happy this year and then another one i hope these aren't the records you're going to show later but this was another one that obviously i've got shrink wrap. oh my god yeah. <laughs> i was going to show that record oh sorry if, okay no no that's fine yeah people if they don't know it they should know about it that my friend marty mm. like uh when they started doing all the reissues, the power yeah. to believe was on my list for the longest time. Right. And then they posted that. I'm like, what the hell's the reconstruction of light? Yeah, me too. And he told me, he was like, yeah, Pat Mastelotto went in and redid the whole record with acoustic drums. And, yeah. and that, it sounds so great. It does. I'm still sort of getting to grips with these because I've never actually heard them on, even on CD. But I managed to pick them up. So this is like, hang on, hang on. We got, so this is like the original cover, right? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that tour. Really? Yeah, John Paul Jones band opened up. Um, we were at the Tower uh, Tower Theater in Philly. That's where, where Greg lives. Right. And we were, we were tenth row center. Me and my buddy Marty. It was a great show. It was super awesome. Yeah. Do you? What's your favorite King Crimson record, Dave? Uh, it's favorite? hard to say, man. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, they're all really great. Yeah. You know, according to Kimson Kring. Uh, Court of the Crimson King is, yeah. is a classic. Like, as soon as you hear it, you know what it is. Yeah. But I really, I love The Power to Believe, the last one. Yes. People think I'm crazy, but yeah, so be it. I think it's great. It is hard to choose a favorite. You know, like uh, Red, the Red, the album Red, that was kind mm -hmm. of a big influence on a lot of bands in Osaka, like a lot of the hardcore bands. Oh, really? Yeah. Because there's that song called One More Red Nightmare on that record. And I think SOB did a video or something called One More Red Nightmare or Rise from the Dead or they they were they oh, really wow. loved that record. Yeah. Oh wow. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Okay, I've got a couple more. Sorry. This, what this if is they not... influence Oh man, I love Zar <laughs> This is not the one that you show, but this is a different yeah. Zar Face. I guess I can in a roundabout way blame Tony for, for my love of Zar oh, yeah. Cause he He's Yeah, because he put he put them on a uh a playlist on our last run with you with uh napalm and sick of it all yeah and we came out to one of his songs like during changeover and i was like man who is this and, yeah. you know i've been in love ever since so good you just mentioned napalm death and s sick of it all i should probably what was it like being on with lou and barney on the road it was awesome all yeah. those guys are great they're such nice guys yeah yeah you know it's really cool when you had when you uh, when you're into music when you're younger and and you meet people that you admire and they're cool it's it's awesome yeah and you become friends with them it's really great yeah I so love spending that. time with those guys was amazing the tour was really fun fantastic okay let's get if you don't mind let's go back and look into some of your discography Dave I've got a couple yeah. of records I'd like to talk about a little bit okay so, Black Army Jacket ah yeah. Tell me about I'm happy. 
<laughs> that that was a fun record to make. Mm. I, I still wish I would have used a different snare drum, but hey, what you, right. what can you do? Yeah. But uh, yeah. that record was those guys are awesome, man. Because mm. uh, Rob had called me to to do like a West Coast tour with them to fill in and I wound up joining the band. I had so much fun with those guys. Kind of similar to Waste, but this was way before that. Right. It's, yeah, that's a great record. It's kind of all over the map. Yeah, I, I, I like it. It's really crazy. And then the uh, we did the uh, re-signaled, re-lined, remixed version a few years later that Andrew put out. Right. Which so, sounds really good because Andrew finally got the guitar sound he wanted. He wasn't happy with the guitar sound on oh, no. that. Yeah, I played it a couple of days ago. I think it still sounds great. Was so what? You know, what kind of bands would you have been playing with at the time when this, when Black? We we actually we toured with Corrupted in the states. Did you? Yeah, and then we Benum, uh, Pig Destroyer, and then we did a lot of stuff with those guys. And then we went out to the West Coast and played with New Thrush a bunch. Cool. Yeah. Interesting thing. This is it's produced by Dean Rispler. Yep. You still in touch with Dean? Yeah, I talked to him loosely over the internet. Really? Because I, I had great. him off a, a few months ago. We talked about New York, you know, punk and metal. And when I, I didn't even notice that he'd produced this record. And then last night I was like, God, it's like Dean. Yeah. Dean produced this record. Ah. Yeah, he's great. What a nice guy. He's so nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was cool. And then Discordance Axis. Oh, yeah. First LP. How about that? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna resignal that one too. I really. Yeah, every, all all that stuff's gonna be re-released within the next year, probably. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Hydra Head went under, and and we can, you know, uh, Aaron. With really nice stories, Hydra Head. Aaron decided to to put it to bed. To bed. Oh yeah. And someone else wanted to buy the whole entire catalog. And he said no. And he just gave everybody their music back to do what they wanted with, which is a very really solid cool. thing to do. Yeah. So we have all that stuff, and we're going to re-release it within the next year. And I'm pretty sure that'll have a new guitar sound as well, because Rob yeah. was never happy with that. Really? It's funny that you showed those two back to back. So yeah, I saw it. Yeah, but like also like this. This is the Devour like records. Yeah. Yes. Version. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's in over in Nagoya now. I haven't seen him for a while. How did you hook up yeah, with I, him? I think the last time I saw him, because when he was living in the states. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't remember the last time I saw him. Maybe the first time Waste came through. He mm. he came out in Nagoya. Yeah, the last time I saw him was in Nagoya when Tragedy toured Japan and his band Muga played. Yeah, that was the last time I saw him. But, He's uh, got that super deep, rich voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see yeah, him. Yeah. He's, he's a good guy. I've, I've heard some funny stories about him, his sort of life in the States, or how he didn't yeah. have a visa for years. Or Yeah, they, they, I think they told him that, to get out. They did, yeah. I don't know the, I don't know the, yeah, the fine print. I've heard various of it, but... versions, but yeah. So, I, I, how, Dave, like, how was this record sort of conceived at the time? Because it, it was very progressive i suppose you could say i mean i can even hear the king crimson influence in this record well uh mm. i'll give you the long story short okay uh human remains my other band yeah was playing with entombed at the fast lane on, on the clandestine right. tour clandestine however you want to say it and john chang was at that show and he yeah. saw us and me he's like hey do you want to i i didn't know who he was he was like do you want to do a grindcore band like all jazzed out mountain dude out <laughs> So we became friends there, and then you know that record happened. But I, I think the key to all the Discordant Axis stuff is is Rob, the guitar player, because he's such a unique, weirdo guitar player, and he writes like nobody else. I, I did notice that. I was give I gave it another really careful listen last night, and some of those riffs are very unique and definitely. A lot of the stuff, we would sit and write. You know, we would sit around and write and like. Oh yeah, we should do this this many times, like making a joke out of it, like thinking it was funny, but it actually, it just worked, it just yeah. worked out. They do, and they're 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 really catchy, and they're they're easy, they're easy to listen to, even though it's very progressive and you could say complicated. I don't know, but it's still very engaging to listen to. 
Yeah, it was fun. It was nice playing with Rob. Yeah. And John, of course. Yeah. So you did a lot of split singles too with Japanese bands as well, right? Like, uh, oh. Yeah, Hellchild. Hellchild, yeah. Multiplex. Multiplex, yeah. And Mel Banana, Banana, who I drummed for for five yeah. years. And uh, I think that I think that was it. And then Sato from HG Fact released some of those records. He did the one with Def Master too, right? Def Master. Yeah, Def Master, yeah, Def that's Master. right. Yeah. I was right. Yeah, I forgot. That, that's, that was an interesting band. But uh, I guess you were kind of ahead of the curve a little bit with doing those splits with Japanese bands. There, weren't, there wasn't too much of that also. No, yeah, that, John uh, was way into it. We're yeah. like, yeah, cool. We didn't really know anything. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, you, we made a lot yeah. of really good friends from it, so it's cool. Yeah. So tell me about that. Discordance Axis Japanese tour. Do you remember who you played with and where you played? And well, the first one. The first one, yeah. I think the first one was, the, I, I believe it was the Antinok. That club in Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I know Marsbo played. Uh, we did like a weird improvised uh, encore set with him. Wow. And uh, oh man. What was that one band? Shit. Oh, Hellchild, of course. Hellchild, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very I fun. think each time we came, they they played. And uh, not Gore Beyond Necropsy. Oh, wait. Mm. Shit. Slight Slappers? Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they killed it. <laughs> Very energetic band. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, were blown yeah. away. Yeah. It was it was a lot of fun. It was, it was a good tour, and then and we didn't really... The first time we went, like when it was over, everybody stood around and they set up all these tables and all these like big guys stood at the exits and they'd set seats up for us. And then they were like, okay, we're like, man, what's going on here? Are they going to beat us up? You know? <laughs> and then one guy goes, no, we drink. And they just brought out a bottle, a bottle, a bottle of sake. And we didn't know what that was. And like we had, some of us had a really hard time the next day. It was pretty funny. Wow. Did you play in Osaka on that first tour? Yeah. Yeah. Wonder where with uh with World. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Osaka. And Mountain. that's Takafumi, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't seen mm -hmm. him for a while. I'm guessing you you probably would have played at Bears or Fandango, maybe. Fandango. Yes. Fandango. That's you know what yep. where I'm sitting. Actually, well, it was five minutes over there. Oh really? Yeah, but it's closed down though, Dave. It's really sad. They they've closed down and it's, they've moved to a oh, different that's a location. bummer. I love that. Yeah, was, those were fun shows. Waze played yeah. Fandango too. Yeah, right. Oh, really? Yeah, it's kind of a smaller mm -hmm. place, right? But it's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect place. It's such a good... And the whole neighborhood is really interesting too. Yeah. I mean, it's just over there. Like, just five that's minutes. That's good, yeah. Over there. Yeah. World and then, and then Corrupted. I think Corrupted played too. And then we we did... Yeah, the whole tour, first tour we did with Corrupted. Because wow. I remember there, <laughs> some of us took the train, some of us took uh, vans. Yeah. And they, and they had two vans, one for all the equipment and then another one for the for the corrupted base cabinet because it was bigger than anything else. It took like four or five people to carry it. And I remember them carrying it down the stairs at Huck Finn in Nagoya. I know. And it, barely, it barely fit. And I remember sitting there and when they were playing the floor shook that's how loud they and heavy they were and it's a cement block floor so yeah. it's something i won't forget it was pretty funny it's a funny thing about that group because they're kind of like they're almost like more popular outside japan than they are in inside japan so in japan you can go and see them at like a 30 or 40 capacity tiny tiny live house and be deafened you know like yeah 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 that's crazy. Yeah, they they were extremely loud. It was great. What you, <laughs> as a drummer like Chu, he was also another guy that I would, would always kind of watch when I would go and see. He was him. a great drummer. Yeah. yeah. I haven't talked to him in a long time. I mm. I was talking to to, to Heve for quite a bit, and I right. haven't talked to him for a while either. But I he was the only one I was communicating with. Right. Yeah, I haven't seen either of those. They had they had a big lineup change, and they had a lot of different vocalists coming and out as well over the. The last yeah. few years, but oh, okay. So he, heavy wasn't heavy wasn't singing. No, he he quit a while back, and they've had a couple oh, of right. vocalists, and so I'm not sure what's happening. So Chu's still drumming. 
I don't know. I mean, Corrupted play very sporadically, and they put out a new record, I think, a couple of years ago on oh, a yeah? British label. I haven't heard it, but uh, hmm. yeah. Mm. But you said you'd been to Japan like eight or ten times, so you must have seen seen a lot on those yeah. trips. Yeah. Yeah, Discordance Access, Burnt by the Sun, Waste, and uh, I actually drummed for Alec Empire at the Fuji Fest at one point. <laughs> Did you? Wow. <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was that was really an eye opener for me. I had never played anything that big before. Right. Damn. It was an interesting time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool though. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. So what was I gonna say? Ah, East West Blast Test was another one that I forgot to mention. Chris Dodge. Because he's that a was big fun. Beer, he's a big beer guy too, right? Yeah, yeah, he's a nerd like myself. <laughs> Is that what like brought you two together, or did that happen later? It happened later. Okay. Yeah, we were in music, and you know, he put out Discord and Split with Plutocracy, and yeah. then he wound up putting out the Iowa Bora Seven Inch, which I love. Mm. And Clive Barker artwork. I'm I'm real psyched on that one. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, yeah, and then like I was way into like getting into beer then and. And he got into beer a little bit later on. And then, uh, but we did the East West Blast test kind of in between those periods. Right. We talked about doing something for the longest time. And I think it was his idea. Hey, why don't you, you know, why don't you record something over there and send it to me type deal? So we did that. I, I, it's, at my, to my understanding, I could be wrong. I, I think we were the first people to try that weirdo like in that in that musical category and it was all like you didn't meet right it was all file exchanges is that right yeah i just yeah. recorded all the drums out of my head like with four counts and then sent them to him and he put everything on top of it oh, amazing so dave I've asked, you, mm, I've asked you to kind of like pick out some records that you want to you want to talk about I got them. Hold on. All right. I'm excited to see what you've picked out. Oh, nice stack. Actually, before, yeah. we, before we do that, I, I wanted to ask you about like jazz drummers as well. Because about 10 years ago, I got really deep into jazz and I didn't... You had, you had Rich vs. Roach? Yes. Yeah. What a great record that yeah. is. Yeah. I think that's where the first blast beat is ever recorded on Mac... <laughs> Yeah, in Buddy Rich in one section of the trade-offs. Yeah. I used to have it memorized, the song and the time and all really? that stuff, because I was totally nerd about that. Yeah, but I, I'm always quick to point that out to people. Some of that, like, yeah, Max Roach and El Elvin Jones, do you, do you like, you're a fan of him? Yeah, great drummer. Yeah. Super good. Yeah. I like a lot of those guys. And then uh, there's a... It's escape me. This is jazz drummer from New York. I don't remember his name right now. I had his record. And it was a drummer-led band. You know, are you talking about Pete LaRocca? No. No. Okay. Like a kind of more modern guy. Okay. Okay. D Dave something. Shit, it, it's slipping my mind right now. Uh, my iPod's broke. Otherwise, <laughs> I'd be able to look it up because I have it on there. That's how I like. That's how old it is. All Someone right. hit me to it, and I was way, it was, I was way into it. Yeah. All right, Dave. Let's get to these records. I'm, I'm excited to see what you've pulled out. My favorite seven inch ever made. <laughs> no comment. Yeah. What a great record. And this is also an, another amazing seven inch that blew my mind the first time I heard it. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I was so into. I was like, "Oh my god, it's so fast <laughs> and it's raw yeah. and crazy." Like when I was into metal only, mm. this one of the first things that were hardcore that changed some stuff for me. Yeah, that's a lot better than the, they, they they put on LP too, right? That's is it yeah, they on? did, and I was mm. bummed that they slowed the songs down. Yeah, it was no, that's much better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then here's that Ibora record I was telling you about. Okay, cool. Yeah, Clyde Barker wound up doing the art for that. Wow. And then Joe met him at, uh, at one of his art shows. And it's a cool story. He, he was like, uh, he bought the print and he was, and he was like, hey, I, you know, I play in this band. We'd love to use this to, as the record cover. Are, are you cool with that? And Clive Barker said, of course I am. I'm an artist, not a capitalist. Yeah. Oh. 
Wow. Let us use it. And then he, when we sent it to him, he wrote back and he goes, wow, this is really good. It's great for LA traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to pick that. Who put that record out, Dave? Who put that uh, out? Him, Chris Dodge. All right. You said so. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll look out for that one. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's getting, uh, we, this is two songs out of four that we recorded in, during our time together. All right. And uh, all four will be getting released pretty soon on Hyperrealist. Cool. For the for the first time. So first time. that'll be nice. Great. And here's that King Crimson record. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I'm so happy that they did those, the three, right? The three sort of modern. Yeah. That one and yep, what's the other two? Yeah, Power to Believe. That's, yeah. Yeah, they look so great and they sound incredible. They do sound amazing, yeah. I'm really psyched on it. Yeah. And then, uh, and then... <laughs> This right here is, I think, one of the best recorded records of all time. It's yes. so great. It, it's like a flawless production. All the songs are awesome. I used to have I, a bunch mm. of copies of it, and I would give it to someone if they didn't have it. I've got this <laughs> really, really beat up copy at the moment. But is that, what, is that, like, is that your favorite Rush LP? No, I think Permanent Waves might be. That's good too, right? Yeah. yeah natural i think natural science is my favorite rush song but it's hard though that yeah even like roll the bones is in such a great album but the the opening track on that dreamline is incredible yeah i like that late era it took me a while but once it clicked and i yeah. understood it yeah they always hit the mark because they always did what they wanted and they didn't care what anybody thought yeah yeah which yeah. was amazing and they were live they were always great i i saw them a lot i was lucky yeah, I've never seen them. Of course, we're never going to see them with Neil Pitt. Yeah, I, I don't think they'll do anything without no, him. I hope, I hope they yeah. don't really, you know. I don't think so. I mean, there was rumors with Mike Portnoy, but I think that's a bunch of BS. No, yeah. I don't think it would be worth it. No, I agree. For this one here. Oh! Grim Reality. That's the first time I heard it, I thought it was on the wrong speed. <laughs> It blew it blew my mind so hard. I was like, "Holy shit, that's the speed it's supposed to be on." It's it was one of the fastest things I had ever heard at that point. That's a real. Thanks for reminding me about that record because that's one I I used to have and I don't have it, and it's kind of on my list to re re get. You know. Yeah, I I love this record so much. Yeah. We wound up doing shows with them a few years back. Did you? Which, wow. Which was cool. Yeah. Uh, and I saw them. I've saw them a lot too. Human Remains played a bunch of shows with them back in the day. A bunch. I'm two. Two. <laughs> yeah. So that's a bunch, right, too? Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that's a classic. Nothing sounds like that record as well. It's one of those unique ones. This is how I got into metal. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because when I was riding my bicycle, I found a cassette at the bottom of the street with this on it. And that's how I found out about Metallica. So it was, it was this, and then Merciful Fate, Don't Break the Oath on the other side. So can you got, I mean, this record, you can't fuck with this record. It's incredible. Yeah. Can you, can you, um, can you go along? How far do you go in the Metallica discography? Can I you... cut it off after Ann Justice. Same. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah. for me. No, I mean, they might like what they're doing, but I don't. No, and, I mean, you know, that's cool. A lot of people like don't like what I do either. So <laughs> you know what I mean. Can I can I mention that a bit, Dave? Because I, it's kind of hard to say, but I, some people have sort of said about the municipal waste thing and everything, and how it's so so different from all your other stuff. You know, like, mm -hmm. what I mean. I love doing it. It's fun to me. That's yeah, all I mean, I've seen I've seen it, and it looks so much fun, and you know. It's the best time in the world. Right. It really is. Yeah. The opening we I went out with the opening weekend with them. And I, at first, I, I just moved to Richmond mm. and I got a job and then I was supposed to do like a ten day tour and then I had to bail and I was bummed about that. And then uh, Tony was like, I was working with Tony after that. Mm. He got he got me my first job in Richmond. And we were silk screen. I was more catching and drying. Mm. He was more printing, but. Uh, yeah, we're going to do a weekend. You want to come? Uh, and I was like, yeah, yeah, cool. And then we went out and did the weekend. And I had the best time in the world. I, I joined the band. I was mm -hmm. like, I, I'm in. Sign me up. 
Yeah. It was so much fun. Everybody was there having a blast, having a great time. It ruled. And you would never have got on that banana boat if you hadn't. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> totally worth it. Totally worth it. Yeah. If only I had known. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. it's great. I can't wait to get back on the road with with the guys. And we just finished our well, we're finishing up our new record too. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. So any are there any plans? I mean, it's hard at the moment, right? But any plans? Uh, well, it's all? just like yeah, it's like shuffling the deck right now because yeah. plans plans are made and then they get moved. So yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, the next set of plans we make won't get moved. Yeah. Everything just keeps moving. Yeah, but what about the new record? Is that done or almost? Almost. We're, we're still working on it. Right. It's close. Yeah. We're all very happy with it. Cool. We 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 got to spend the time to play it together a lot in the room. You know, all work on it together, which mm. which we haven't been able to do for the past couple of records. Right. And I think it hits all the marks. Cool. And Barney's on there. He said he'd done a bit of backing vocals. He went to Birmingham to record them. He said, "Yeah, Barnes, he sounds great. <laughs> he's 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 he sounds really good. I'm psyched on it. <laughs> yeah, I really hope you can come back to Japan next year. We do too. We had the best time. That's my favorite place ever. So I where, totally where, want to. Come where back. do you usually play when you when you come on on tour with in Quattro? Maybe right? Quattro, Club Quattro, yeah. Club Quattro, yeah. yeah. Then west and east. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it, so it's usually Tokyo and Osaka, and then Nagoya. One time we did. One time we did Nagoya. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of near here too. Yeah, that was Nagoya. Actually, it's like the that, halfway mark, right? Yeah, but just the uh, Osaka Quattro is kind of just not too far from where I am. Oh, now. okay. Gotcha. That was actually the last show I went to this year was at Club Quattro. That was March, I think. There's been okay. no, no, nothing since. Yeah. And then how far are you from Rock Rock? Oh, there you go. That's a blast from the past. I used to go there all the yeah. time, Dave. But it's about, well, I'm on the, I'm a bit north. So you take the Midosuji line through the center of Osaka, like through Umeda, and you get down to Shinsaibashi. So I probably, if I left now, I'd probably be there in about 40 minutes. You, go, you went there, right? Yeah, that place is a lot of fun. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> yeah, we try to cram it in whenever, whenever we're there. So, I guess it's you know like on the list. Yeah, you got to do it. Yeah, I haven't been there for a while. I met Captain Sensible there one time when I was just drinking at the bar. Yeah, he came in. Peter Chris as well. He was. Oh wow, really? One time, yeah. That's but, super cool. Yeah, but we sat at the bar like nobody, nobody knew who he was. Obviously, no makeup. We were just sat. We drank for like. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just talked to him for like two hours, just me and him, just sat at the bar. So oh, that must have been fantastic. It was fun, yeah. I don't remember much about it because it was 3 a.m., you know. But it was just so yeah. cool, just talking to Pete, Peter, you know. Yeah, he was just being normal and cool. Just being, that's it, just being a guy at the bar, you know. Like That's, uh, that's great. And he yeah. could do that whenever he wants because nobody knows who he is. Nobody knew who he was, yeah. yeah. That rules. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the worst one was like, I was in there when Lemmy was in there one time, but I didn't know he was in there because there was that, that little VIP room they call it, just off to the. Mm. Apparently he was in. He was in there. Oh wow, that's cool. Didn't know, but I'm kind of almost glad because you know I didn't. Probably would have made a fool of myself, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a punisher. <laughs> punisher. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so I got I got these two records I want to show. Oh, real, sorry, yeah. Real fast. Come on, come on, yeah, yeah. So. This one here changed my life. Ooh. I say that a lot, but mm. I really mean it with this. When, when I heard this, I first got the cassette, so I freaked out when I saw it on vinyl years ago. Mm. I wasn't even collecting vinyl when I got this because right. I knew I just had to have it. Mm. But this 1988 or 89 demo from Ripping Corpse changed how I thought about metal music and made me totally change my whole dr approach to drumming. It it was it was a shock, and it, oh. it's still my favorite demo of all time. Can you tell uh, us a little everyone, bit about the band, Dave? Because I'm I'm not too familiar. They're American band. Uh, Ripping really? Corpse. They were yeah. a metal band with like some a little bit of hardcore influence from Red Bank, New Jersey. Right. They were a huge influence to everyone in the local area. Human Remains was like 
we, we wanted to be a carbon copy. That's how much we looked really? up to them. And it, they changed everything. They were, every national act that came to town, these guys chewed them up. No one, no one had a chance. They were so much better than everybody else. And they were doing their own thing, which leads me to the next step. Are we talking like mid eighties? That, that rip, rip and cool? Late eighties, early nineties. Okay, okay. This came out in 90. That's their album, oh, Dreaming wow. with the Dead. I don't know if you could see that or yep, not. Yep, yep, gotcha, yep. But the story behind this mm. is another, I bought it when I wasn't in the, the vinyl. Mm. And I remember hanging out with Scott Roof, the singer, and he didn't have it. I was like, you can't not have your own mm. record on vinyl. So I gave him my copy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And then maybe two, three years ago, I saw this hanging in a window in Germany and went nuts. Like, you know, like a, a cat running past the dog's window. <laughs> oh, oh my God, I go back and get it. So I went and, bought, I went and got it the next day and I paid 80 euros for it and I don't regret a cent. Uh. That's the most I've ever paid for a record, but it's like, this is a really, really important record to me. It's going on my list for sure. That's yeah, it's a new one for me. Yeah, it's it's oh, yeah. it's fucking fantastic, man. Like, growing up, I saw them over a hundred times. I wound up roadieing for them, and wow. Scott the singer gave me my first batch of flyers for the underground tape trading and all that stuff. Those guys did everything possible for us, wow. for, and lyrics. You know, Scott was a master wordsmith. Mm. Turned us on to H.B. Lovecraft and Claude Barker, and you name it. Wow. So, you know, you know, for metal, like aggressive metal, they're my holy grail. Ripping corpse. Yeah. So it was really nice to be able to get this back. Yeah. That's like, like early 90s, right? I, this came out in 90, yeah. Yeah. So maybe they, maybe that was the era when not many, not maybe not too many pressed on vinyl, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Music for Nations did this okay. under one, under one flag. Right. Yeah, I had I went nuts when I saw it. I can I can I can picture the scene. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, because like you know I okay. gave it away. So wh wh where when were you when were you happiest? The banana boat or the moment you saw that in the window? Banana boat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nothing will talk. Nothing will talk about nothing, it, it was, Even the ripping corp, yeah. corpse album. <laughs> it was seriously so much fun. I remember Tony standing up on it at one point, like. We're standing up, high five one each other, trying to hold on for dear life. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. I highly recommend it if you ever have the I'll, opportunity. I'll give it a go. I'm, you've got me sold. I'm, yeah. Yeah, banana boat for life. <laughs> I, I'm surprised I don't have a banana boat tattoo. I didn't, I, that, we need to. We, we need to get at that one, guys. <laughs> if 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 they're out there listening. <laughs> Do you have any favorite records from this year? Have you bought anything from this year? Or this yeah, is... the Aranasi Pazuzu. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I really love that band. Yeah. They're brilliant. super good. Yeah. Really good. And then uh, just like two days ago, I finally got to listen to the new Nothing album. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. It's so good. What a recording, all the songs. Great. Um, there's a lot of other yeah. stuff that came out this year that I can't remember right now. And the ACDC album, of course. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. 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 New Napalm Death album. Did you, have you listened to that? Yep. Yeah. That's the best one they've done in a long time. I, I think so. They really nailed it on this one. Yeah, not that not the others were bad, but I was like, whoa. It like, kind of knocked me off my feet. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of uh, variety on there. That kind of song that sounds a little bit like Killing Joke, but they do it so well. Yeah, yeah. They really, they really uh, hit a home run with that one. They Everything... Did. All across the board, everything's great. Yeah, not yeah. one mo one weak moment or filler on it at all. I agree. For me. I agree absolutely. Yeah, that made my top kind of top five of this year. Yeah, um, that's, that one's really good. Well, how about you? What else for you? Well, there's that uh, okay. Drop Dead put out a new record, which I don't own it yet, but I've heard it. Yeah, I haven't heard it yet. No, it's, it's, it's again, I demerits for that too, because those guys are great. <laughs> right. Actually, I've got my I've got my list here. To, uh, it's kind of long. We could go through it a little bit, but uh, as a as a that grime band from Australia, Internal Rot, they put out good a, stuff. 
uh, it's like really old school, like back to basics, uh, grind core. That's a real good one. Yeah. Internal rot. I'm down with that. Really good. And the raspberry bulbs album on relapse. It's someone from Rorschach, but it's kind of real like psychedelic. Oh yeah. That's uh Tom, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was I really haven't heard good, that. That, that I reckon I, recommend i sent the link to barney and that's made his list for the year as well he he, he was he really likes it as well oh i need to very check unsettling out. record really good yeah what else i don't know caustic wound was another good caustic wound was another good grind record from this year it's on profound law oh okay yeah i like it he has good taste he has put a lot of good yeah, stuff yeah what else necrot Oh yeah, the Necrot record's Necrot great. Mor Mortal. Yeah. See, yeah, I know when you say it, I go, "Oh yeah, that record's yeah. amazing," but I just can't remember anything. Right you know, I I was I just since last year I've sort of started to make a, a list because I my memory is just so terrible that I I've started to make lists because <laughs> otherwise I, I can't you. remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people put you on the spot. It's like, but now I've got it here. And there's a band. There's a I don't know if you you might have played with this band. It's a band called Green Machine, Japanese band familiar maybe they're like they go back to the 90s they're kind of a not stir they kind of mix like sludge with like japanese hardcore so they kind of mm. sound like i hate god meets like an old japanese hardcore band okay green machine but they put out a new record this year which is also really good okay what was right. that one one japanese band that i that, that i loved oh uh <laughs> it's, uh shit something men Oh, not like with the saxophone. No. no. Well, well, there's another one I like with that saxophone. They're Happy Family. That band rips. Okay. Uh, men. I was thinking of Colored Rice Men, which is like a hardcore band with saxophone. I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't All remember right. it right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think of it too as well. It's like... Wow. So that was about it. Um, Bastard Priest was another good one. I like it's like a Swedish band, old school death metal, but done really well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. And Sirith Ungle would power a new record. I heard that's good, and I heard that New Armored Saints really good oh. too. I haven't heard either of them yet. But I did the other day discover something for the first time that I thought was great that Plantasia album. Oh, I've not heard that one. Yeah. It's all all Moogs. The guy, guy's name's Mort Mort mm. something. He's a famous guy from the seventies. I didn't know anything about oh. him, and he made this music for plants. It's called Plantasia. Ah. It's for people that grow plants and are in the plants. You play it for your plants, and they, you know, they, they listen to it. <laughs> but it's re it's a great record. It came out in seventy six. Wow. Sounds yeah, cool. someone played it for me the other day, and it was it was really awesome. So I got mm. that coming to me. Wow. I, one more is a band called Halas. They're from Sweden. They're like a prog band. They sound a bit like King Crimson, a little bit. Oh, like anec like Anecdoten. That's another. Yes, yeah, kind of yeah. a little bit different, but yeah, they're a great yeah. band. Yeah, I Anecdoten. saw them. I've got one of their records. They're quite kind of hard to find. They don't press too yeah, many on vinyl. But... I got I got four or five of their albums, and I mm. I saw them. This is funny. Okay. I saw them at the Knitting Factory in New York in the original location. It was me, my friend Steve, and about twenty Japanese people, and that was it. There was no one there, <laughs> and they were fantastic. Amazing, yeah, yeah. I've tried to kind of hype, not hype them, but tell people about that band. No one's interested, you know. But great band. Yeah, they were super good. I got into them and Porcupine Tree and yeah. Osric Tentacles all around the same time. Oh, you like Osric Tentacles? Love them. I finally wow. found Strangitude on vinyl my last oh. trip there. I used to go and see them a lot in England because they would play that, you know, the free festival. Yeah, I've seen them in here a few times. Really? Wow. Yeah, great. I love them, man. They're yeah, super yeah. good. Very good band. Yeah, yeah. And one more, Maggot Heart. Band from there, another Swedish band, Mercy Machine. Very kind of post-punk yeah. uh, female guitarist and vocalist. That was another one from this year. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I have to check that out. Uh, I'm sure there's some stuff that I really like this year that I just can't remember. Yeah. I've been trying to make an effort, you know, I don't want to be that guy who doesn't know anything about anything that's, you know, new, you know, I want to be trying to, you know, keep up with things because there's a lot of good stuff right. coming out, right? Oh, yeah, uh, you, you know, uh, there's an, 
there's another label in town here, Beach Impediment. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, yes. Mark yeah. Schubert, they, he just put out this public acid seven inch and holy shit, that thing's great. A lot of people so that, I, was, I was psyched on that. Yeah, a lot of people have been talking about that one. I just picked up a record on that label. Blood Pressure is on that yeah. label. Uh -huh. I just bought that used yesterday, yeah, on Beach. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So you find that in the store over there? Can you go um, record shopping? I found it used in a shop called uh, Revenge Records, which is run by Jackie, who played in that band Framted. But I think it's in the same location as the old Grindcore store that was in Osaka. Remember that? Oh, okay. I forget what it's called. The guy from um, Unholy Grave had that. Oh, store. yeah, yeah. We Taz, yeah, Taz. I I feel like it's in the same room, but it's he's it's changed owners, and so it's called Revenge Records. So. You know, we played with them a lot too. Uh, Discord and Saxis, and we also played with Tomorrow, and and Nagoya, they, a long time ago. Now they, it's all coming back. But they go. They sang in Italian, right? Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was corrupted tomorrow, like all the you know all these yeah. different languages. It was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But here, here's another mm. thing I want mm. to ask you about. Yeah. So there's this crazy satanic store in Osaka. Do you, do you know what that is? I do. It's called. Where you can only go in, and the guy, guy just stands there, real silent. You, you, have you been in there? Yeah, we we went last time. We discovered it last time we were there, and it was it was quite the experience. Okay, I'll I'll tell you a little bit about that shop. It's it's from. This is cool, actually. I'm glad you mentioned this because uh, it's run by a guy called Taiki. That's his name. Mm -hmm. And back in the 80s, he sang in a band called Freedom, a hardcore band. They have one seven inch. Right. And he's a you know a local guy on the scene. He he, uh, he opened that store and he had a bar uh, next to that store too. It's closed now, but I saw Dystopia and Corrupted there. Like it's right. It was right next to Territory. Tiny little room. Okay. So wow. he did that, and uh, what? Else? And he sang in Corrupted for a while. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. T T can. Taiki. Taiki. Ta yeah, I didn't get yeah. that right at all. <laughs> oh, pig pigmen. Pigmen. There you go. Pigmen. Yeah. <laughs> pigmen. Yeah. Taiki. That remember. band was great. It, it, yeah. When when Burnt by the Sun came to Japan, we requested them. They play and they played. They were really? awesome. Yeah, yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. But yeah. And then do you remember that band Toast that that yeah. uh that Sato put out? Yeah, they're from Kyoto. Just they they were kinda of, I've seen them a few times, yeah. All I have is that that compact disc that came in the seven inch sleeve that H D Fact put out. Actually they've got like a a ten inch picture disc as well. Oh really? Is it different yeah. material or is it? Yeah, it's thing? called Cranky Rocknicks. It could be the same material, but there's a ten inch uh, picture disc and a seven inch too i think you always that that you see them used all the time because they pressed a lot of copies oh yeah i didn't like that's the only thing i know i don't really know nothing about that band. Oh, all right if i see a copy again i'll get it for you yeah please yeah yeah, yeah i've yeah. never seen them they were great I, I really liked that record a lot energetic bands yeah they're a kyoto band i used to go and see them when i first moved to japan they were very active so i saw them quite a lot in the late 90s yeah well cool. when did you move to japan Oh, it's like 1999, 1998, I think. I moved. Okay. It. Did yeah. you see this Gordon Texas? I didn't. No, well, it was kind no. of rough when I moved here. I had a job that was like 80 hours a week. I didn't get to see. Oh. Okay. Yeah, my, yeah, my, my, Japan, yeah, my like, like my image of what it was going to be like and the reality was quite different. You know? Right. Yeah. I thought I was going to be at the you know, shows every night and that didn't happen. For... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Just living the, you know, the salary man life, but yeah i wish i'd seen discordant saxes there's a lot of things i didn't get to see back then but there's a lot of stuff i wish i saw too Brian. yeah yeah that was fun japan was really good to us Did and you i still remember that that uh uh i think it was the last show in tokyo sitting on the curb outside uh, agata and yako asking me if i wanted to drum for them in europe like a few months later and i was like yes <laughs> <laughs> How did that go? Like, because they they just they're just a two piece now. I think the last time I saw them, and they they sound better than they ever have. I I, I think they sound yeah. so good. Yeah, I I think it's great with just the two of them in the machines. Yeah, it's so powerful that there's no nothing lost. Mm. 
they, but they were a lot of fun to tour with and they taught me a lot. They taught me how to speak Japanese and, and it's kind of gone now when I get, when I get, you know, loosened One up more beer. Talking, it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> Moto Bilu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <We're carrying us>. <laughs> <laughs> that's an, in, that's just a one of a kind band again. Nobody else sounds like them or like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. I like, it was, difficult learning their stuff and, and it was mm. kind of far out right. on, a, on a limb and and but i had a great time with them they showed me the world and i'll, I'll always be thankful for that yeah so you, you just you, did you record with them or just just went on tour right just went on tour but we mm. did do a peel session and it never came out so it, it recorded but it never came out yeah it's like uh not the best performance and like i had just learned the songs and they were all way too fast because i was too excited <laughs> They're way too fast, and then it's like I had just learned them, so I was kind of nervous in the first place. Mm. And then I have John Peel sitting in the glass booth about five feet from me watching everything I'm doing, so I was extremely nervous. <laughs> and he was really great, by the way. What a nice guy. Yeah. He um he did a lot for Japanese hardcore, too. He really was a big fan. Yeah, he loved Mel Banana, that's yeah, for sure. He did, yeah, yeah. He was sat there watching. Yeah, it was the most so nerve wracking. And then he was just like talking to me like normal and, and yeah. then totally re made me relax. He was super cool. Yeah. He used to go to a lot of the hardcore gigs as well, just show up with his family. You know. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Always bought records t too. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. Dave, any. Goodbye, Bashi is poor. So I, I just hope that we can come back to Japan next year. And me too yeah well i i hope to visit what i really want to do is visit thrash zone brewing in yokohama me and barney were just talking about that last night because he's been there a few times and yeah uh, i met i met those uh, kenji i think it is uh yeah yeah koichi koichi yeah, yeah. i met him in at the pliny the elder this is funny because mm. <laughs> <laughs> me and me and scotty from tank crimes yeah Met him at the Pliny, Pliny the uh, Younger release at, at Russian River in California. Wow. He was he was there for it. And he was wearing a waist shirt and, and like something like that. Nah. And it like he, he like we had, you know, we wound up hanging out for a little bit and he was real nice and we stayed in touch. He's a he's a he's a great, great guy. There's a funny story about how Thrash Zone came. He got he he lived in Osaka for a while, about mm -hmm. twenty years ago. He was just a salary man. And have you ever tried Mino beer, Dave? Is it familiar? Does that sound familiar to you? It's from North yeah. Osaka. Mino, Mino beer. No, I don't think so. So okay, so if you come to Osaka, that's definitely I want to, I want to get you to try Mino beer. I'd love to. Yeah, it's a very kind of. They don't have any fancy beers. They have a stout, a double IPA, you know, a pale ale, a, a, a lager, and but really nice. Run by two uh, sisters. Um, oh, okay, great. And their stout is particularly great, I would say. But anyway, they, they were the inspiration for him to open Thrush Zone, was Mino Beer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's yeah. it, Mino or Nino? Mino. I'll send you the link later when we finish. But yeah, Mino, please do. It's a little town north of Osaka in the mountains. And it was originally just, they brewed sake. The father just was, and he was like, I've got these two daughters. What can I, what, what can I do with them? So he taught them. And they, <laughs> <laughs> so they started making beer. And right. they just became this incredible, like, local brewing. They're doing pretty well. They've got three or four pubs in Osaka. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I look forward to that. Yeah. So, yeah, that was how Thrash Zone, that, that was the sort of in, inspiration for Thrash Zone, was Mino Beer. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. I love hearing the origins. Yeah, I, that was very cool. And so I used to have a girlfriend in Yokohama, so every time I went up there, I would go to Thrash Zone and, get very drunk because there's no like four or five <laughs> or even six percent beers there it's all right extreme beers is his thing right extreme beers yeah yeah his thing, so. i've only been to yokohama once to the uh the uh, horiyoshi studio oh wow i i i went with someone that was being tattooed i wasn't okay. but my takeaway from that is i fell in love with beard papa <laughs> <laughs> The the what, the cream puffs, <laughs> yeah, I went crazy for them. Yeah, God. Oh, and then when I so found cool. out they had them in in the United States, I went nuts. They have them in the states too. 
Yeah, they have a couple in California, and I believe one's in Philadelphia now, or maybe even D.C., actually. Damn, like, you know, that's so funny, because, like, <laughs> there's always, like, the beer, there's a beer puppers, like, in the station down from me. There's always yeah. a line. Like, every time I go yeah. Oh, they're so like, delicious. <laughs> and the smell. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, but I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to, like, since I've, I've gone mm. vegan, I, I wonder uh, if uh, if they if they're ever gonna make make that vegan. change. <laughs> Beard Who knows? Yeah, that's an underrated like establishment. Well, well, they're really popular, but yeah, so, yeah, that's funny. I mate. need that little guy tattooed on me. <laughs> <laughs> that's been on my list, but I haven't done it. Well, uh, imagine like eating a Beard Papa's cream puff on a banana boat. Listening to rip, listening that's, to ripping corpse. Like. Yeah, that's he that's heaven right there. <laughs> Drinking a stout. <laughs> yeah, actually, that reminds me of something I forgot to ask you about the vegan thing. You had, you've got your own food truck, right? Is that yeah, uh, yeah, April and I, my mm. my lady, we we started a food truck about three years ago. We haven't done anything this year due to the pandemic, uh, but and then we wound up joining forces with a uh, another couple. And we, now we have a uh, brick and mortar called uh, Hang Space. Oh wow! For for just over uh, close to two years. Wow! Nice. Wow. Do you sell? Yeah, beer? that's still going. Yeah, it's all vegan. Yeah, and do you sell beer as well? Uh, yeah, we have yeah. ABC license, but we're not really doing anything right now. That yeah, since yeah. everything's so weird, you know. Yeah, yeah. People aren't really buying it. Right. They'll they'll go to the breweries and, and support them, which which is good. It's important. Right. You got to support the breweries because they're always there for you when you need them. Right. I, I agree. Yeah. 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 All right, Dave, we could talk for hours about beer and we probably will. Well, let's do it in person next time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll have a pint at Mino beer. Yeah. I'm yeah. down. Sign me up. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Dave. It was so much fun. Thanks. I had a great time, Mike. Yeah. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. I'm oh, going to yeah. do my little sign off. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Dave. Until next time, Thanks. stay healthy and stay clean.